Ignorance is just not the lack of knowledge. It is the lack of knowledge of the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Kindly pay attention as God's servant, Dr. Sheyi Obembe of Voice of Liberty Global Ministries, ministers to you the gospel of liberty in Christ Jesus. Welcome to Destiny Conference. By the grace of God, this evening the Lord is going to do great and mighty things in our lives in Jesus' name. The Lord is going to reshape in our destinies this evening in the name of Jesus. Please quickly open your Bible to the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Starting from verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1. I would like to read from my hand. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 18 from verse 1, it said, The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a walk on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was mad. In another words, the vessel was broken, the vessel was damaged in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel. Can, can I not do, cannot I do with you as this potter, said the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Praise Jesus. So, as I read this portion of the scripture, some questions began to jump at me. And the first question I asked the Lord is, God, why would you ask why would god ask jeremiah to go to the potter's house before he could hear the voice of god don't forget jeremiah was a it was a high class prophet when it comes to capturing the voice of god jeremiah was there jeremiah never had any issue hearing the word of God because he has been in the prophetic office for years. But a time came and God said, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my word. Another question that came up in my mind was the potter's house is a very messy, very dirty and rough environment. Why would God tell a holy prophet with clean prophetic garments to go down to the potter's house? Otherwise, he would not be able to hear him. So I concluded that God, who is an intentional God, must be up to something. There was a mystery that God wanted to unravel by telling Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. Otherwise, he would not be able to hear him. So as I read further, I saw in verse 6, God said, Behold, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Don't forget, Jeremiah was part of the house of Israel. He was a prophet to the nation of Israel. So God was referring to both Jeremiah and the entire generation. So God said, as the clay is in the hand of this potter that you are saying, eh? so are ye in my hand. Now say this after me, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so am I in the hand of God. So when I saw that verse of the scripture, something struck me. He said, as the clay. Now the word as 
is a word that is used to introduce a figure of speech called simile. How many of you have heard about simile? You've heard about simile. Raise up your hand. Metaphor. Ah! Are there English students here? Yeah? Maybe I should do some some tests. Where's Bro John? Bro John, what is hyperbole? What's an hyperbole? What about synecdoche? <laughs> Onomatopoeia. <laughs> oh my Jesus. You guys have used that to eat uh, a bar. Praise God. But at least you remember simile. Simile is when you are using something to compare another thing. Something that looks alike. So when God said, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, as so are you in my hand. So I realized that God was trying to use the entire scenario to tell a parable to Jeremiah. The whole instruction, go down to, um, go down to the potter's house, watch the potter, and as the potter was carving out a, a vessel, the vessel got broken. That whole scenario was a parable that God was using to, to pass a message to Jere Jeremiah and his generation. So, who is the potter in this context? God. Who is the clay? Men. Praise God. Now, the potter's house eh, is the similitude of a realm, a place where God molds men in preparation for their destiny. Are you following me? Please, we are going somewhere very powerful. Just keep following. The potter's house was a similitude of where God molds men and makes them for destiny. The potter's house is not a physical geographical location. It's a spiritual location where God makes men and trains men. Every potter or every artist understands that before he carves, before he molds a vessel, the potter must have an image of what he wants to make. How many of you are creative people here? At least I, 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 can, I know some creative people here. All right. Before you write, before you make a movie, you write a story, a script around the movie. And the script is what is, is the end that you are saying. Before you draw a picture, you have a mental picture of what you want to draw. Likewise, when the potter wanted to make the vessel at the potter's house, he had an original picture he had in his mind that he wanted to carve out. Praise Jesus. So, we can say that the potter's house is a spiritual location where God makes men. Where God carves out the image he has about them in destiny. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when God told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house, God was not just trying to stress him. God was trying to use that old scenario to tell a story, to tell a parable. And by the Spirit of God, we're going to be unraveling that parable very soon in the name of Jesus. So he said, Dear, when you get there, dear, I will cause you to hear my voice. Note God did not say, When you get to the potter's house, I will speak to you. He said, I will cause you to hear my voice. In other words, God was saying that there's something I will do to you when you get to the potter's house. And I, when I finish doing what I want to do with you, you will begin to hear my voice. The kind of hearing God was talking about here was on another level. It wasn't the same kind of hearing that Jeremiah had been used to. The Greek word for the word ear, or rather the Hebrew word for the word ear in that portion of the scripture is what we call Shama. Shama means alignment and obedience. So God says, when you get to the potter's house, I will do something to you. I will cause you to align. I will cause you to obey me. Praise God. Praise Jesus. So I realized that not until God sends men down to the potter's house, eh, they never really have what it takes to obey God. A man can promise God, God, trust me. I will obey you. I will follow you wherever you go. And everyone is shaking their head. Peter said, said the same thing. He said, Master, everybody can leave you, but just leave me and you alone. Wherever you go, I will follow you. And Jesus smiled. He said, very soon, eh, the cock will not crow, crow three times before you what? You deny me. No man genuinely have what it takes to align with the, 
with the will and the plan of God for his life until God does something to him at the potter's house. So if you see any man that God is using in a generation, if you see any man that is standing in destiny and doing what God wants him to do in life, that man has passed through the potter's house because at the potter's house, God, God aligns men with his purposes, with his eternal counsel, so that when they stand, they are reflecting the glory of God. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. When the angel appeared to the mother of Samson, the angel told her that he will give back to his son. The name, the name will be called Samson. And he said, don't give him a drink. Don't cut his head. He must not eat or touch an unclean thing. Unclean thing, blah, blah, blah. She told the story to her husband. Maona or something. And the man said, out of everything the woman said to, to him, he, he wasn't impressed. There was a question on the heart of the man. He said, how shall we order the child? I have heard that he must not drink hard drink. He must not take alcohol. He must not touch unclean thing. I have heard that he must not cut his hair. But there is an issue paramount in my heart. And that question is what? How shall we order him? The woman could not answer that question. Some days later, the angel came back again. And when the angel said the same thing he said to the woman, the man came and said, Sir, everything you said we will do. But there is this question that is paramount in my heart. How shall we order him? How shall we mold him? How shall we tame him? How shall we cause him to align with this great destiny? The angel could not answer. Do you know what the angel said? He said, all that I've told the woman, just do. And the angel left. So, a man was born on earth. His life was being guided by do's and don'ts. But there was no structure around his life to mold him to to align to that instruction they gave him do's and don't don't do this don't do that but there was no place there was no platform for discipleship there was no platform for alignment don't forget what i said that nobody truly has what it takes to obey god if you see any man that is in perfect alignment with the will of god on it everyone has done something to him at the potter's house so samson was born without a structure to mold him. The Bible says his destiny was to begin to deliver the people of God from the Philistines. God did not say his destiny was to deliver them. His destiny was to begin the deliverance process. For those of us that watch Relay Race, you will understand that one of the most important persons at the Relay Race is the man that begins the race. The people in the middle, they are not, they are not as important as the man that starts it. If, you, if the man that starts a relay race, instead of running like this, he runs like this. Every other person, what happens to them? They hear. Alright? So, the destiny of Samson was to begin the, to, to initiate, orchestrate the deliverance of the people of God. And so, the cloud of witnesses, they were waiting for this guy to get it right. They were waiting for him to come to a point where he will align with the will of God, the, the blueprint of God for his destiny. But Samson blew, blew it. And the generations that were depending on him, they missed it. So Samson was not present at the potter's house. And he messed up big time in destiny. Now, what happens at the potter's house? I have said it, but let me illustrate it. If you have seen men mold clay, what do they do? They rub their hands around it to conform it to a certain shape they have in their head. Right? They keep rubbing it. They keep rubbing it. So... When God called Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house, it was the similitude of how God invites every man he wants to use in the generation. He invites them to go down to the potter's house where he will rub his palms on, on them until their generation begin to see the, the imprint of God on their lives. Until, until, until the hand of God gets imprinted on your life. You have not yet passed through the potter's house. So that is what God does to men. He conforms, he makes you align with the picture he has in his head about your destiny. I want you to make up your mind today that you will never be anything less than the picture that God has in his head for your life in the name of Jesus. Can you say it after me in the name of Jesus? I will never become anything short of the picture that God has in head for me in the name of Jesus. 
So God said to Jeremiah, as long as you remain where you are, I cannot walk with you. I cannot align you. But when you go down to the potter's house, you give me the opportunity to align you and make you obey. Do you know the reason why a lot of Christians never fulfill purpose? Or the reason why a lot of God's children will never fulfill the, the original picture that God has in mind for them? Eh? The reason is because the road to the potter's house is down. What did I say? God said to Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. The route, the path to the potter's house is where? Is down. And the implication of that is that when God sends a man to the potter's house, eh, his, line be, his life begins to take a, a decline because a lot of temptation, trials, tribulations, sacrifices begin to come his way. He begins to experience some pain and he begins to wonder, Lord, what are you trying to do with my life? There is no man that God sent down to the potter's house who will not experience these negative experiences. So I wrote here that in order to get men to align, God has devised a strategy of us sending them down through the path of suffering, trials, and temptation. And then he begins to mold, mold them until the imprint of God is left on them. Now, let me share a popular story. I'm sure you, are, you know the story of, uh, of um, Joseph. When Joseph got to a certain age, he had a vision about his destiny. He had a dream. He saw his father, mother, the siblings. They were doing what? They were bowing down. And this guy was so excited. He was like, he thought he was going to enter into the palace the next day. But you know what Evan did? Evan sent him down. Somebody say down. God sent him down to the potter's house to be molded. Joseph's path to greatness eh, took a low land of servitude, temptation, character, assassination, and imprisonment. Imagine you are living a problem, another problem is coming up. It was like continuously, constantly, his life was moving from bad to worse. Things were not working from him. Even when he thought he had escaped suffering and he was at the Potiphar's house, he was already feeling like a big boy. He was the chief, the leader of all the servants. His life seemed to be working temporarily. Evan said, you are not yet at the potter's house. So something happened to Joseph. God sent him to the prison. I thought the Bible says the path of the just is like a, what? A shining light that is supposed to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. <clears throat> but for Joseph, his light was shine, was going what? Dimmer and dimmer. It was as though the call of God was not upon his life. It was as though it was not going to amount to anything in his life. And why Joseph was crying, God, what are you trying to do with me? I can still remember the dream. The moon and the star, they bowed down to me. I can remember the dream of my head when I was young. What has happened to those dreams? What has happened to those visions? Why am I in the prison? And God, I can hear God say, don't worry. You are on your way down to the potter's house. There's something I'm trying to make out of your life with all the experiences, everything you are going through. It may not seem palatable. You may, you may cry. You may shed midnight tears. You may see your colleagues. Things are working for them. Their lives are making sense. And when you begin to compare, you are even more intelligent than them. But everything seems to be happening for them. Somebody leaves the university, gets a job, immediately gets married, has his children. Everything is sorted for him. And there you are, you love God more than him. There you are, you, you are even more anointed than him. And your life is declining, declining, declining. I can hear God say, endure the pain because the way to the top is down. God said, go down to the potter's house. Can you bear the pain to go down? My generation does not want to go down. So even when God is passing us through some training to mold us so that his imprint can be left on our lives, we are looking for shortcuts. We don't want to go down. If you don't learn what I'm saying, 
all right if you don't learn what i'm saying life will happen to you you will get depressed over and over and over again you will attempt suicide i'm passionate about what i'm saying because over the over the past one week one of our members attempted suicide she sent a very funny we're not funny she sent a very she left a suicide note for me on whatsapp and when i read the message around the level I was destabilized. This was the same person I spoke to a Sunday before that time. Counseled that I know she had problems, challenges, but the Bible says there is no temptation that has overtaken you except that which is common to men. I counseled that, gave her strategies, do it this way, do it that way, only for her soul to be beclouded with, the, with depression. And she got to a point where she took poison. I told the brethren, start praying for her. Please start praying for her. God so good, somebody came to our house around the level PM eh, to take her to the hospital. Maybe by now we would have been done. Listen to me, if you don't understand the dealings of God with men, life will present terrible problems that will depress you and you will, you will, you will see. Sometimes when you see people committing suicide, you can be too quick to judge them until you face what they are facing. But there is a way you can analyze the problem, the challenges of your life in the light of the word of God. The Bible says our light affliction. Someone say light affliction. He said good is for a moment. Ah, that, is what it, that is what the people of God don't know. A man of God said five minutes to your breakthrough. It will still not look like it. Because see, men don't have, we don't have the ability to see the future. You don't know what is going to happen in the next one minute. So even when heaven has planned to open heavens unto you, one minute to that time, everything is still dark. For Joseph, his life took a downward, a decline. And almost overnight, everything turned around for him. He became one of the most powerful men in the world. Go down to the potter's house. When the Bible says, Count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall, somebody say fall. When you fall, see, we don't want to fall. That's the problem. I don't know the kind of gospel we had when we got when we believed. There are people that will tell you at, at, at the point of salvation, say, just give your life to Jesus, all your problem will be solved. Jesus will give you money, Jesus will do this. Jesus. I hope I'm talking to mature people here. I hope there is no unbeliever here. The way you enter the kingdom of God determines the way you continue. The Paul said, as you have believed in him, so also continue. The way you begin a journey determines how you continue. Can I reshape your understanding that the fact that you are a child of God eh, is the more reason why affliction will come? The Bible says, when Jesus was being crucified, Satan was happy. And when he turned around, the Bible says, if the prince of this world had known, he would not have crucified who? The Lord of glory. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience, somebody say let patience. Have a perfect work that you may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Now, open your Bible to the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Let me show you something powerful. Hebrews 5 7. I'm reading Good News Translation. The Bible says, In his life on earth, talking about Jesus. Hebrews 5 7. In his life on earth, Jesus made his prayers and requests with loud cries and tears to God, who could save him from death. And because he was humble and devoted, God ate him. Good news version says, he says, he made requests with loud cry and tears to God. Who could save him from death? In other words, he was telling God, God, save me from death. And the next, well, the next statement says, because he was humble and devoted, God ate him. So Jesus was asking that God will save him from death. And the Bible says, God ate him. In other words, God answered the prayer. But do you know the way God answered the prayer? 
was not the way you would expect God to answer the prayer. God heard him, yet he went to the cross and died. Because the Bible says he needed to learn obedience by the things he suffered. He needed to, to, to I told you, you cannot just obey God. As God must do something to you to make you align. So God heard him. He answered the prayer, yet he needed to see it is not every problem you pray against that God answers you and even when you answer when God answers you the answer does not come the way you expect it to come imagine Jesus God bless you Jesus was asking God to take away the death God heard him but the way God heard him is that God sent angels to strengthen him Remember, after he prayed, the Bible says the drop, the, the, the sweat in his body was like what blood. After that encounter, angels came to do what to, to minister strength unto him. There are times that you are praying, God, take away this problem, and the way God will answer your prayer is that He will give you strength to pass through the problem. He said, when you when you walk, when you pass through water, I will deliver you. Is that what he said? He said, I will be with you. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, he said, Three times I prayed to the Lord about this, and I asked him to take it away. But his answer was, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Listen to me. Your scar is a report card in the realm of the spirit that you have learned obedience by the way of suffering. And when you learn obedience like that, heaven finds it easy to mold you into the shape that God has in mind for you. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Now, one of my clients in um, in our clinic, by God's grace, I have a clinic, addictions to COVID clinic, an online online clinic. One of my clinic who is struggling with pornography and masturbation, he told me one day, said, "Sir, because of this problem, I fasted 21 days dry." When I heard that, I shook because even me, I've never done that kind of fast before. How many of you have fasted for 21 days dry? Some of you have not fasted one day. Dry. This guy fasted 21 days. Dry. Without food. And do you know the funniest thing? He's a white guy. American. If he was an African, I could say, ah, Africans are rugged. Ah, we pay a machine, can do anything. But you see a white man, he doesn't have money problem. He doesn't have any problem in the world. But this issue of pornography drove him to the place of prayer for 21 good days. Now, in his heart, he thought he was fasting and praying for God to take away the problem. But in the mind of heaven, heaven was luring him to the place of consecration and separation. Can you see how God can use that temptation, that problem you are passing through? How God can use it to lure you? Because any man that God will use, any man that will be a vessel of to honor in his generation, he must learn consecration. So God looked at the young man, what can I use to lure this guy to this place of, to the place of prayer? For Africans, maybe God could have used poverty. But over there, everything is sorted. Good road, good light. And God allowed Satan to afflict him with that infirmity. And that drove this guy to the place of prayer. He waited on God for 21 days. And God was saying, correct. Welcome to the potter's house. Welcome to where? Can you see how temptation and affliction can bring a man down to a place where he will be left alone with God? Yoruba calls it as a bitch. When a man comes face, face to face to come, come. Let's assume this is a narrow road. You are coming like this. God is coming like this. There are no spaces. It's a narrow road. It can only take one person per time. It is called SMG. And you want to pass. God wants to pass. You want to have your way. God wants to have his way. Somebody will need to bow for somebody. Yoruba says, 
Ah! Somebody must bend. So God has a way of using challenges of life, the occurrences of life, to bring you down to the potter's house. So that when you are left face to face with the potter, you have to bow. You have to align. He has to mold you. You may not understand what God is doing to you. But in the realm of the spirit, God is leaving his imprint upon your destiny. So that when you stand before your generation, may we know you have been to the potter's house. Have your seat. They know you have been somewhere. When the apostle spoke, rather, when Jesus spoke and the, the Pharisee wanted to capture Jesus, when they go to him, they could not capture him. They said, No, no man, yet no man speak like this. In other words, an ordinary man does not have what it takes to talk like this. They could not capture him. They went back. Why? Because Jesus passed through the potter's house. Because you cannot pass through the potter's house and your life will remain the same. Ramako sekete le brokoto le brakata. Mina hanti hakukuti kapa. Point comes for the next 30 seconds. Nama sita ha. Shika kukata. Who in the days of his flesh. He offered up prayers. We strong cry. Unto him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard. In that he feared. He was heard. In that he feared. This is a cup of suffering. You have to drink it. This is how God makes men. This is the ancient part of goodness. You don't have to understand what God is saying. Can you trust the potter? Can you trust the potter? Can you trust the potter? Why did they get damaged in the hand of God? Then the Bible led me, God led me to verse 8. He said, But you, my people, you have turned from me to burn incense to worthless idols. You have left the ancient path. Somebody said the ancient path. You have left the ancient path to follow an unknown path where you stumble over demons, over idols. So God was saying, the reason my people got broken in my hand was because they went the way of disobedience. They went the way of wardom. They went the way of idolatry. And God to a point where he either wanted to he, he wanted to either discard them or mold them into something else and the condition is that they needed to realign if they realigned with him God wanted to make them eh, into another shape so I realize that when a man makes it down to the potter's house but he does not still align with God some people God will make them go through tribulations affliction to get the attention yet they will not yield so i realized through the word of god that when you get to the potter's house and you still refuse to align with god there are two options it's either god discards you and faces another generation or he molds you to something inferior to what you should have become let me tell you about the story of solomon there was a time that David, the father of Solomon, he, wo he woke up in his house and he was moving about. And David said to himself, he said, I live in the house of Seda, but the ark of God lives in tents. He said, I want to build a house for God. And God sent a prophet to David. He said, go and tell David, that thing which you, which you proposed in your heart to do for me is a noble thing. But I will not allow you to do it but because your hands are filled with blood. So God said, your seed. Somebody say seed. God said, your seed will build a house and a boat for me. And he said something about that seed. He said, I would establish the kingdom of that seed forever. He said, if that seed commits a sin, I will correct him with the rod of men. But my mercy will not depart from him. So Solomon, the seed of, of David, stood up and built the house of God. 
when he built the house of God and he dedicated it, the glory of God descended heavily. The presence of God came upon for you to know that God really wanted Solomon to build a house. The presence of God came on the temple. And God determined that he would establish the kingdom of Solomon forever. For several years down the line, the Bible says, and Solomon loved many strange women. And these strange women, the Bible says, they took his heart away from the presence of God. Solomon got to a point where he was following his wives to, to the shrines of, of idol worshippers. He forgot the living God. And he, started, he became an idol worshipper. And God said, oh, I withdraw my word. Kali kapa. The Bible says, much later, eh, that the presence of God left the temple that Solomon built and it never returned. It went back to heaven and God changed his mind about Solomon. You know, God said he was going to establish the kingdom of that city forever. God changed his mind. The kingdom of Solomon was divided into seven. He gave six to the servant of Solomon and he gave one for, to Solomon. But you know, God said, even if you commit a sin, I will correct him with the rod of men, but my mercy will not depart. So, in honor of that promise, God did not allow that to be fulfilled in the lifetime of Solomon. God made it fulfilled when Solomon died. He was fulfilled in the kingdom of his son. The kingdom was divided to what? Seven times. Seven, seven places. Six parts of the kingdom was taken by his servants. And the seed of Solomon was left with one. They wanted to revolt and fight. God said, don't, don't, don't try it. This thing is from the Lord. But do you know that in honor of what God said to David, that your seed will build a house for me, God sent Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham. And God established his kingdom forever. Right now, Jesus is sitting on the throne of David forever. Somebody say forever. It could have been the throne of Solomon. But because Solomon messed up, eh, his destiny was cut short. Cut short. It was molded into an inferior version of himself. Do you know Jesus now has built God a house on earth? What did I say? Jesus has done what? He has built a house for God on earth. Let me show you. Let me show you. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. He said, ye also. Somebody say, ye, ye also. He said, ye also as lively stones are built up into a spiritual house. Kalatu sabalata. And only priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. By who? By Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 19 says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So Jesus has come to build a house for God, and we are the house of God. Say, I am the temple of God. I am the house of God. I am the house of God. So the implication of what we are saying is that when God sends a man to the potter's house by the way of afflictions, if the man does not yield and align with God, God will mold him into a, an inferior version of himself. And God will look into the seed of that man and fulfill his promise with the seed of that man. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. That will not, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory to God. How many minutes do I have more? Oh, Rabba Shata, glory to God. Okay, let me round up. Now, for many of us, God has sent you to the potter's house. You look at your life full of problems, full of challenges, failure, lack, temptations, addictions, things that heaven intended to use to lure you to the place of prayer to the secret place but because you could not bear the pain you neglected the ancient part I pray tonight the Holy Ghost will restore you in the name of Jesus some, some of us because of poverty now you are sleeping with men so that they can 
credit your account. Some of you, you are you, you've gone to the point of scamming people, engaging in dubious activities. Why? Because you cannot endure the pain of holding. Some of you, you are struggling with sexual addictions. Before you were fighting it, you were doing everything possible. You ran to the place of prayer and fasting. You stayed with God. You asked people for help. But now you have you have given up. Now you have stopped fighting it. You have accepted it. Do you know what you have done? You have left the ancient parts. Some of you, God gave you some instructions that are critical to your destiny. God told you, leave this relationship now. God told you, leave this job now. Specific instructions, you know that you know that God is speaking to you. But because of the cares of life, fear, anxiety, you don't know how to survive. You are still here. Some of you, you plan to obey God later. But you want to do your own agenda now. God says, hello, delayed obedience is tantamount to disobedience. The Bible says when God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, he rose up early. Somebody said early. It is not enough to obey God. You must obey him early. For the business of the king requires haste. What did I say? It requires haste. Can you be on your feet? You are going to pray some dangerous prayer. Prayer of dedication unto God. Prayer of consecration. You want to tell the Lord, Lord, I align myself at the potter's house. Do with me what you want. I trust your judgment. God does not want your life to end up the way Israel's Israelites end up, ended up. Jesus said concerning Jerusalem, He said, Oh Jerusalem, which killed the prophet and stoned them that sent unto you. How often will I try to gather your children together? He said, but now your house is left unto you desolate. May heaven not give up on your case in the name of Jesus. May God not change his mind over your destiny in the name of Jesus. That thing God wants to do, that original plan, may God never change his mind in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands and begin to pray. Say, Jesus. I realign with you. I follow the ancient path. I follow the way of obedience. Go to Jeremiah. Go down to the potter's house. For there, I will cause you to obey me. I will cause you to hear my word. Go down. Are there men who, who are willing to pay the price? Even if it will take you to go down. You are ready to submit to heaven. So that the original intent of God can be fulfilled in your life. Thank you, Jesus. This is the place. This is This is your opportunity. This is the to pray. Tell Jesus, I am ready. Here I am ready to endure in your praise. I am ready to endure the pain of molding. Do with me what you want. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You and I, Jesus. You and I, Jesus. Do to me what you want. Do to me what you want, you want Jesus. Holy Ghost move. I make myself available at the potter's house. I make myself available at the potter's house. I make myself available. I yield to you. I surrender. I submit. I surrender. I submit. I surrender. I submit. This is a potter's house. Holy Ghost, make me. Holy Ghost, make me. I love I yield to you. I surrender. I surrender. Your poverty is not the waste. The temptation you are going through is not the waste. Your scars are the 
God in the realm of the spirit. There is something God is with. Holy Ghost, do with my life what you intended. Do with my life what you intended. Do with my destiny what you intended. I must not miss my assignment. I must not miss my purpose. Holy Ghost. Surrender hall. Surrender.